Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to sit down and just try out some new makeup that I got at Sephora over the weekend and also talk about a big change that I'm going to be making to my channel. Um, let's go ahead and jump in and I'm going to just start with a lip balm that I got. I had my eye on this on the website and I never ended up ordering it. Then I saw it in store and just kind of threw it right into my basket. This is from Lawless. It's the Forget the Filter Overnight sorry, not forget the filter, forget the filler overnight lip plumping mask. And my lips definitely are feeling a little bit dry. So this is supposed to be a hydrating, plumping, and smoothing lip mask to kind of smooth out those fine lines. It doesn't really have much of a scent to it. Maybe just like slightly fruity. I don't know, but I'm just gonna put a little bit on so that my lips don't look super dry throughout the video. They might anyway. I always tend to get comments saying like, your lips look really dry. And most of the time they're not. I do apply balms and lip masks regularly. I think it's just because I have so many lines in my lips that they tend to look dry because I feel like lines in your lips are a sign that they're dehydrated. I just naturally have them. Even if I'm wearing like the most hydrating balm, they're still there, but this is actually supposed to help minimize them. So we'll see if it works. I also got the new Patrick Ta Major Dimension 2 palette. So I have the original one, really like the formula a lot. And I saw this online and I really wasn't going to get it because it's another rosy tone palette and I feel like I have so many of those now. I just talked about the Sigma New Mod palette and did a whole bunch of comparisons with all of my rosy tone palettes and I felt like I had enough. So I was planning to skip this and then when I saw it in store, I decided to get it because of the shimmer shades. Let me just show you guys what it looks like. So the outer packaging looks pretty much the same as the original Major Dimension, except that it has um, like a rose tone border around it. And then when you open it up, you have the row of shimmers on the top, the row of mattes on the bottom, and then the two cream shades all the way to the left. And the shimmer shades are really what sold me with this palette because when I swatched a couple in store, they really have so much dimension to them. They have like micro glitters that almost make them seem like a duochrome where you have, you know, like a peachy shade, but it has this golden shimmer in it. So it kind of almost makes it look like it shifts a little bit. It's absolutely stunning. And when you see the swatches, you'll know what I'm talking about like these just kind of pop so much and I just had to try them out and see what they were gonna look like. Now, when I see the swatches, I definitely see a warmer tone palette than I was expecting. It doesn't look quite as rosy to me once I swatch it out. So I guess that is a little bit of a point of difference between this and some of the other rosy tone palettes I have, but I figured we'll do a look with this and see how it comes out. So let's go ahead and start with that and then we'll kind of chat about the change that I'm gonna be making to my channel. So I'm gonna start with this shade right here at the bottom and I'm gonna pick it up with my refer number 14 brush, which is my absolute favorite brush for applying shadow to my crease. It's small, it's perfect if you have hooded eyes. And then I usually take a larger brush and kind of blend it out from there. So as you can probably tell by the title of this video or maybe the thumbnail, I'm not sure what I'm gonna title it yet, but I am not gonna be doing sponsored content on my channel anymore. And this, I feel like it's been a long time coming. I wasn't sure 100% yet if I was gonna do it, but certain things that have happened lately just made me realize that sponsorships are just not for me and it's not what I wanna do with my channel. And I wanna kind of start out and just put a little disclaimer out there that I am in no means begrudging anybody or looking down on anybody that does sponsorships. I feel like as YouTubers, we spend so much time and money and effort putting these videos together and they're for free for everybody to watch. So I feel like we should get paid, you know, why not? As a viewer, if I don't wanna watch a sponsored video, I can just skip that video. Or if it's just like an ad at the beginning of a video, I'll just skip that and then move on. It's not really a big deal to me when people do sponsored content. I don't mind it, especially if the person is somebody that I trust. I was a stay at home mom for several years before I started my channel. Channel. The only reason I really started this channel was just for something to do. It's like a hobby because I have always worked my entire life. I started working when I was 14 years old. Like as soon as I could get my working papers, I went and got a job at Burger King. And I actually 
babysat before that, like from when I was 12. So I've always been interested in working and keeping busy. There were times in my life where I worked two jobs, like pretty much around the clock, seven days a week. I don't mind being busy at all. And then when I had my son and I decided to stay home with him because the daycare costs were basically going to cancel out my income anyway, it didn't really make sense for me to keep working. You know, I did the mom thing for a few months and then I was like, I need to do something else. And I was blogging at the time. So that's really what I started doing. And I was on Instagram. And it was a few years later before I joined YouTube. And that was just because I felt like blogs were sort of falling out of favor. Nobody was really reading it anymore. And believe me, YouTube was probably the last thing I ever expected to do because I'm a very shy, introverted kind of a person. The thought of putting myself out there on YouTube in front of the world was really um, scary for me. I didn't think I wanted to do it. And then the appeal, I guess, of just having something else to do and to be able to talk about a subject that I love, which is makeup, is really what ended up motivating me. And I just sort of needed that creative outlet so I didn't completely go stir crazy being at home with a baby all day. So it's never been about making money for me. It's never been about fame, especially if you knew me, like I do not like to be the center of attention. I hate parties that are for me. I don't like everybody looking at me. I just kind of want to fade into the background. Fame is absolutely the last thing I would ever want. One time a brand invited me to a, like a holiday party in New York City. And as much as I would have loved to go, I just couldn't imagine it. I could never go on a brand trip if anybody ever invited me to go. I just have a hard time talking to people, making small talk, all of that. So the point of all of this is it's been super fun, like growing my channel, getting PR, you know, being recognized by brands, uh, chatting with other influencers and also with you guys. I mean, it's been so, so much fun and I've had a great experience for the most part. The money side of it was never really into the equation. So when I started getting getting sponsorships, I really have been very, very selective about which ones I take. I'm just gonna grab the next darkest shade right here in the middle. As my channel has grown, I've turned down, I would say probably like 90% of all the sponsorship opportunities that have come my way. I mean, I've been approached by like HelloFresh and some of those meal delivery services. Um, like Ana Luisa Jewelry, Skillshare, um, Lily Silk, the Kenzie hair removal device, um, Function of Beauty, I think, Native, Curology, and Agency Skincare. Like, I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. And I've politely turned them all down because I just didn't feel like they fit into the aesthetic of my channel, which is makeup. I've really only done a handful to begin with anyway, so this really isn't like that big of a change, but the first big reason that I decided to not do them anymore is because we just did our taxes recently, back in April, and oh my gosh, <laughs> I don't think people really realize like that we have to pay taxes on all of the money that we earn just like anybody else and they're not taking taxes out during the year so we're responsible for setting all that money aside for tax time and with my husband's income because we're married and filed jointly um, you know, he's in an upper income bracket that basically they take the federal government takes 30 something percent and then the state of Connecticut takes another 7 percent. So we're creeping pretty close to like 50 percent of our income that we have to give away. So anything that I do every single time I get paid, I take half of it and just put it away to taxes because I don't want to risk not having enough at the end of the year. So for me, I have to take like that amount that they're offering and just slice it in half. And often at that point, it's just really not worth it anymore. Okay, so I think I'm gonna pick up like this peachy one first and then do the one next to it as well. Um, and then the other thing is you have to keep track of all of these sponsorships that you've done. So at the end of the year at tax time, not every brand will send you the tax statement. So you have to kind of email everybody, chase them down, 
just to get them to send you what you need to do your taxes. And it just really complicates things. With Google, it's like with AdSense, I'm getting one tax statement at the end of the year and that's it. It's so much easier. I mean, I do have uh, my affiliate network as well, but that's just one more that I have to deal with. It's not like a ton of different things. And honestly, I don't make a lot of money with affiliate links. I do put them under my videos, but I think it's because I talk about drugstore makeup so often. A lot of you guys probably just go and buy a lot of it in store. I think people are more likely to buy makeup online. I feel like if it's high end because it's harder to get it in store. And with drugstore, you can just like go to CVS or Target or whatever, or Walmart and buy it there so I think that's part of it and the other part might be just because drugstore makeup is cheaper so I'm making you know maybe like a few cents off of a sale versus like a few dollars so my affiliate money really is not like the biggest part of it right now it's absolutely AdSense 100% and then sponsorships would be second to that but without those I feel like it'll just simplify things so so much and just lower my income as well so I don't have to owe as much at the end of the year all right, so I'm just going to do foundation next before I do my lower lash line, and I'm going to use the Catrice True Skin Hydrating Foundation. So anyway, all that to say that I feel like it's just easier to focus on like growing my channel, growing views, and not really, you know, worrying about sponsorships and just being able to do like what I want. I think that's the other biggest thing that's sort of turning me off from doing those types of videos is that for me, the creative process is the most most enjoyable part. I love like thinking up video ideas and what products I'm going to use for the video. And if somebody's telling me like you have to use, you know, XYZ products, you have to say this, this and this, it just kind of like takes all the fun out of it. And it starts to feel like work at that point, you know, like whenever I get an email from a brand. It's so exciting at first. Like, you know, one of my favorite brands emails me and says like, we love your work we want to pay you to make a 15 minute video. It sounds fantastic. It's like, is this really my life? Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Um, but it can be very frustrating because they'll come with this whole list of demands. Like you can't use any other brands that compete with our brand, like, and they'll give you a whole list. So even if the sponsored portion is only like the first couple minutes of the video for the whole rest of it, you can't use, let's say like pretty much every other drugstore brand. So it's like, okay, I'm going to talk about this drugstore brand and then switch to high end. Like, and then you're trying to figure out how is this going to make sense? How is this going to really work? And then of course they want to see the video once you're done with it, you have to submit it for approval. And that can be nerve wracking as well because they're basically scrutinizing everything you do, everything you say. And I've had brands come back and tell me like, you have to take this out. You can't say this or that. And that's one thing. If I have to take something out, that's not a big deal. That's just editing. But I've also had brands come back and say, you have to completely change something like, you used a product that we don't want you to use or you use something in older packaging and you need to use the new packaging and it's like then I literally have to reshoot this entire video and that takes me two days because I have to film it and then all the editing is what really takes the longest and I edit myself, I don't have an editor. So it's a lot of time to have to sit there and do it over again, especially when you thought, okay, like I'm done and then you still have this deadline. And a lot of brands too, they don't give you any time. Like they'll email you and you accept and you say, okay, yes, I'm gonna do it. And then they'll say, okay, great. We need this by next week. And it's like, well, I have other stuff scheduled for next week and it's like, but they're running a campaign and they want everybody's video to go out like kind of roughly around the same time. So it's like, no, we need it by like this date. If you can't do it, then, you know, I'm like, okay, fine. Like I'll try to make it work and I'll push other things aside. But that can be hard too. Like if let's say you get sick, you're not feeling well, like family stuff comes up, whatever it is, then you just constantly have to worry about like, can I get this done in time? And are they gonna approve it? Because if they don't, then you have to start back at square one. So there's just a lot, a lot of like frustration when you're working with brands. And it's just for me again, because because this is not like a job for me, it's a hobby and it's supposed to be fun. That, all of that whole process sucks the fun out of it for me. And I just feel so much better when I can just do what I wanna do 
on the schedule that I want to do it, not feel like somebody's going to be scrutinizing me or telling me what I can and can't do in the videos. So it's just way more relaxing to do it myself. All right, so I have a new concealer from Lawless. This is called Conceal the Deal. They sent this to me in PR. I have the shade Petal. And it claims to be a full coverage concealer that has like a semi-matte finish and it's supposed to be self-setting. So it's not gonna crease and you don't need to set it with powder. I normally don't anyway, so it's not really a big deal for me, but let me just quickly show you a couple of the different shades that they sent me, some swatches. They're all lighter colors that I feel like most of these would work for me. I chose the shade Petal just because it has a little bit more of that cooler pink undertone. I think that'll be the best match, but I think the others will work just as well. I'll probably just give them to my sisters because we all kind of have a similar skin tone. All right, so I'm just gonna apply like a little bit of this to my inner corner. I don't like to put too much concealer because it starts to get cakey on me. And I'm gonna use the brush that I got from Amazon. If you missed that video, this brush is like a perfect dupe for the Rare Beauty one. It's just the perfect under eye concealer brush. So I'll link it down below in case you wanna check that out. This definitely seems to have full coverage. It hid like the darkness in the inner corner of my eye really well. And it seems to be blending out really nicely. It doesn't look dry. It's very seamless and really skin-like too. I'm just gonna put a little bit more now on my outer corner. I haven't tried much from Lawless and now here I have like the lip mask on, which by the way, it feels really nice. It's not a super thick lip mask. I feel like it just kind of sunk right into my lips. It doesn't leave like a glossy finish or anything. And I mean, my lips look a little bit smoother, but I don't think it made like the biggest difference in the world. But yeah, anyway, um, I'm just not gonna be doing sponsored content anymore. It's gonna be hard, I think, to turn those down when those emails come, especially if it's a brand that I really like, that I enjoy working with. But between the taxes and just that feeling that I know I always get when I have a deadline looming, I would just rather not do it. And I'm just gonna have to really, I think, be strong when I get those emails and just not let it get to my head that, you know, this brand wants to work with me, we're offering you all this money, because I think that's what really ends up happening and that's where I get into trouble. And I end up accepting something that I'm really not gonna be happy doing. All right, I'm just gonna take my BK Beauty 204 smudger brush and I'm just gonna go back into that crease shade that I used and line underneath my eyes. These shadows are really, really pigmented. They kind of remind me of Natasha Denona a little bit. I feel like they're just slightly hard to work with for me because I'm not the best at blending. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do my eyeliner off camera. I just find it so much easier and I will be right back with mascara. All right, back with mascara, I'm gonna be using the Cali Ray Come Hell or High Water Mascara. This is a tubing formula I got at Sephora recently and I've really been enjoying it. I love tubing formulas because they do not smudge under your eyes at all. And I really like the brush on this one. It's small, so I'm not super clumsy with it. I'm not getting like mascara all over my eyelids, which sometimes happens with bigger wands. Yeah, so you can see like the difference before and after. It just gives like such good length, I love it. And somehow I feel like it gives a really nice curl as well. A lot of tubing formulas don't do that, but this one curls up my lashes and kind of keeps them there all day, which is really kind of unexpected. And this is also a mascara that has gotten even better with time at first. I felt like it was pretty good, but now I just love it so much more now that it's dried out a little. I think it gives even more length and volume than it did at the beginning, which is kinda, I feel like it's typical for a lot of mascaras to be that way. And then for blush, I'm gonna be using the one from Item Beauty. This is the Blush and Like, and it's in the shade Oopsies. I got two shades of this a while back, and I showed them in a dupes video because I feel like this formula is pretty much exactly the same as the J-Cat Marshmallow Blushes. I think that's what they're called. It's pretty much identical. They're a cream, but they feel like a powder, so they're very dry, but they go on like a cream. They look like a cream. They're really nice. But I went back and got this color because the J-Cat ones that I have are little bit like brighter and I just thought this soft pink was really beautiful so I think I'm probably just gonna apply this with my fingers you can use a brush as well but it just goes on so easily with your hands and this is such a pretty like pinky coral shade really loving it I'll show you what it looks like applying it with a brush on the other side. All right, so I'm gonna use the Flower Beauty blush brush this is my absolute favorite blush brush it's amazing 
it's not too big and chunky so it's just like the perfect size and I love the shape of it it's kind of tapered at the end but like fluffy in the middle and it just really allows you to put the blush exactly where you want it so yeah I feel like it goes on just slightly more sheer with a brush but then you can just build it to whatever you want and then for lips, I got one of the Dior Addict lip glows in the shade Rosewood. When I was in Charleston and I went to Sephora, these were like all sold out, pretty much every color. And then I think they still might be sold out on Sephora's website, but I just happened to see some stock in my local store. So I feel like it's probably one of those things you have to check the store for. These must have been featured on TikTok or something because between these and the lip oils, you can't get them. They're just sold out everywhere. They have kind of a minty scent, which isn't my favorite, but it's not super strong at least. It's basically like a lip balm, but it gives your lips like this little bit of a dewy appearance. It's not glossy. Yeah, that's really pretty. I actually like this color a lot. It's sheer and it feels really good. It has like a kind of cushiony feel to it. All right, so I am just going to do my hair and I'll be right back and let you know my final thoughts. All right, guys, so here is the final look. I'm loving the eye look. It is so like glowy and glimmery. Those shimmer shades really are something very special. And even though they have those little glitters, they're not like going everywhere. So that's a good thing, at least not yet. They haven't migrated like down to my cheeks or anything. They're kind of just staying where they are. So yeah, I felt like the formula was just slightly tricky to work with, especially the mattes given how pigmented they are. I felt like I was blending forever, but I think next time maybe I'll just go in a little bit lighter with those to start out with and hopefully that'll solve the issue. When it comes to the Lawless Concealer, I actually, even though it's supposed to be like a self-setting, non-creasing formula, I see it settling into, like I have two fine lines underneath each of my eyes and it's settling pretty badly. I don't know if that's because it's more of like a semi-matte finish and I have drier skin. So not super happy with that. I don't know if like as the summertime hits and my skin gets a little bit more to the normal side, it might be better, but it reminds me so much of my Catrice True Skin Concealer in terms of like how full coverage it is. It has the same kind of like feel to it and that one doesn't settle into my lines and it's so much cheaper. So I feel like I may just stick with the Catrice one. I loved how this looked initially, but just, I don't know. I mean, it's only the first time I've tried it, so I'll have to wait and see, and I'll definitely try it some more and see if I like it a little bit better. And then as far as the lip mask also, I felt like it was just a lip mask. I didn't seem to really notice like a ton of smoothing or plumping. For me, it just sort of felt like a lip balm. Like it wasn't anything that I feel like made a big transformation when it comes to my lips. So I don't know, I'm kind of on the fence. Maybe it's one of those things that you have to use over time really to see results and it's not gonna be like immediate. So I'll definitely keep using it. I feel like it's actually a good lip mask to use during the day because it's not super thick and goopy and like it just kind of sinks right into your lips and you can easily apply lipstick right over it like I did. So from that aspect, I think it actually is really useful because I can just use it during the daytime. Of course, I love the Item Beauty blush. I just have had so much fun with these. I feel like the formula is just so beautiful. And while I do love cream blushes, some of the ones that are a little bit more sticky can get even worse in the summertime. And I love that this one is so dry and basically feels like a powder right away. So it's not gonna be sticky like in the humid weather. I love that. As I mentioned, I'm loving the Cali Ray mascara. Highly recommend you check this one out. And the Dior Lip Glow, I mean, I love this color. I think it's so pretty, and this feels very nice on my lips. Like I said, it has that kind of cushiony feel. It makes them feel super soft, so I really like that as well. So anyway, that's everything. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, as far as all the sponsorship stuff goes, this is just a very personal decision for me, but I don't look down on anybody that does sponsorships. I feel like they are a good thing for YouTube creators. It's just for me, I don't like the process of it and I don't like the taxes situation and just, you know, there's stuff that kind of contributed to my personal situation, but it doesn't apply to everybody. So it's just something that I plan to do from now on. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. 
and for clicking on this video in the first place. I appreciate it so, so much. And if you are new to my channel and you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you go, especially if you like drugstore makeup and dupes. I know I did a lot of high-end makeup in today's video, but that's not really typical of my channel. I do it once in a while though. So anyway, thank you guys so much and I hope to see you all in my next video. Take care and stay safe. Bye guys.